It wasn't until 2015 when my club Frosinone Calcio made history following their automatic promotion from Serie B, making their debut appearance in the top flight of Italian football, the Serie A. A small province located in the Lazio region were going to be coming up against the best teams in the country, a dream come true. With their most recent Serie A campaign being in 2019, unfortunately getting relegated back to the Serie B, finishing off their second top flight appearance in 19th, that is where we come in. Today, we're taking charge of the Giallo Azzurri for a marathon of a rebuild in FIFA 20 career mode. Yes, that's right. No rules or conditions. However long it takes us, we're taking the Canaries to the top of Italian and European football. Mark my words. So BCHD will make this team the best side in world football. Just watch this space. So if you guys go on to enjoy this 50,000 subscribers special, make sure to smash that like button. I've got to thank you all so much for 50 50,000 subscribers. Honestly, a milestone I never thought I'd reach doing YouTube. So as much as this video is about me and my club, it's dedicated to you guys, showing you support on the videos and the channel, which never goes unnoticed. Whether you subscribed to me last week, last decade, or when I first started all those years ago, it is all very much appreciated. The road to 100k begins now. Now, despite all that, yes, this is a squad we are dealing with, and yes, it is the place where my family came from in Italy. You might only have heard of them a handful of times, but nevertheless, they've made two Steady R appearances, both which I have seen in recent years. Let's go! Get in! Come on! Let's 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 go, baby! Come on! Yes! Basically, been following them ever since. Been wanting to do a video about them, been wanting to do a rebuild for quite a while now, and I thought this would be the perfect chance to, the perfect opportunity, and you guys get an absolute monster of a video to enjoy. It is my hometown club, and I'm proud to be taking charge of them, rebuilding them to the top of world football, and with the main overarching goal of winning the Champions League final, which we will go ahead and play. I'm definitely looking for a brand new midfielder, an attacking midfielder, preferably, maybe a winger, and maybe a brand new center back, who knows, but we only have a little limited budget here. We are starting off in Serie B. So the aim for this season is to get back to the big time, promoted to the Serie R. We just got to aim for promotion in season one. And when you talk about a shoestring budget, yes, we only have literally five million pounds to spend in season one. And our first piece of business in the Frosinone mega rebuild today will be Adil Ayushish, a 16 year old French midfielder from PSG. We managed to pick him up for his valuation. 950k for the Frenchman. He's one of my favorite one kids in FIFA. 20 and he's joining one of my favorite clubs so welcome on board Adil Ayushish. And here we have our second signing of the rebuild. It is a forgotten Italian wonder kid from a few years gone by. It is AS Monaco's Pietro Pellegri. We are hoping to be the place where he can kickstart his career back up. He's a 67 rated striker still only 18 years of age. He's definitely one for the future and will be leading our line for many years to come. Let's hope he can pick up some form and gather some momentum as we try and aim for promotion. We struck a sneaky little swap deal with Monaco for 920k plus Raffaele Maiello. So it's improvements in our attack, midfield and defense as we bring in Nicolo Armini for literally just over 1 million pounds arrives from Lazio and it's a brand new breath of fresh air in that defensive department. It is our most expensive signing yet. We're trusting in our homegrown talent. He's an exciting prospect and he is going to be a future captain here at Frosinone. And we have probably bagged one of the bargains of the video so far. We have picked up Alan Velasco over from Independiente in Argentina. The 16 year old is arriving for 380k plus Dielia headed the other way. He's one of the youngest players ever to have a game face. He is a very much welcomed addition into the squad. And we are just balling on a budget out here. We're trying to get as much as our business done as possible throughout this window and as early as we can. This is our cheapest deal yet for 20k. I don't think I've ever picked anyone up in career mode for that much money. It is another swap deal. It is Shiminsky going the other way to Celtic as we pick up the young and upcoming right back Jeremy Frimpong. He is Dutch and he's an exciting prospect as well. I've had a lot of you guys request me to sign him in some videos. So hey, this is where we've done it. It is Frimpong joining up with Frosinone. Don't get him confused with the English Arsenal Frimpong from a few years ago. We've brought in 
a brand new upgrade at right back. And in order to raise a few more funds to bring in a marquee signing, we have had to let go of Nicolo Brigenti. He's off to England, joining Leeds in the championship for 900k. The 29-year-old centre-back is offloaded alongside our backup goalkeeper, Alessandro Iacobucci. He is making the switch over to Turkey for 500k. And what is probably going to be one of our last pieces of business in this summer transfer window, we've gone hard. We've picked up Carles Perez, the Barcelona La Masse Youth Academy graduate for 6.6 .6 million pounds. It is a great deal we've picked up there. We've managed to negotiate our way through that one. I don't know how we've pulled it off, but we just have, and we've squeezed every single last penny out of the transfer budget. So the Spanish right midfielder is going to be our marquee signing. We actually have some deadline day news to report on. It is a departure out the club. Nicola Citro is off to Malaga in Spain, and the Italian striker has finally departed the club. We've been trying to offload him for a while now. It's a bit of dead wood and we've managed to sell him on for 740k. And that will beautifully wrap up a productive and efficient transfer window to kickstart off season one. And I'm definitely excited for the future. Offloading a lot of dead wood and also introducing a large youth intake that will future-proof the squad. This is how we are lining up to start off season one. Obviously, we're aiming for promotion this season but anything can happen in Serie B. One of the best leagues in the world. So let's get it underway. And at the halfway stage, we are battling it out with the big boys on top for promotion. Benevento leading the charge with 61 points. We are headed steady in third position with 50. It is between us and a plethora of other sides fighting out for that second automatic promotion spot. Just like in real life, it's pretty realistic so far. All things are going to plan come January. Let's hope for an even better second half of the season. So with the season over, it looks like our promotion campaign took a bit of a plummet. We finished in fourth position, qualifying for the playoffs, the elongated and famous Serie B playoffs. It is Benevento and Empoli grabbing those automatic promotion spots to Serie A. And we are going to be up against the likes of Spezia, Crotone, Pescara, Ascoli and Salernitana. If it does make any difference, we did get eliminated in the Coppa Italia round 3 to Pordenone 2-1. So over the course of two legs in the promotion playoff semi-final, we beat out Salernitana 4-1 on aggregate. And now we are into the promotion playoff final over two legs against Spezia. And we end up winning the playoff final against against Spezia over two legs, 3-1 on aggregate, a 2-1 victory at home in the return to mark off a brilliant campaign and a deserved promotion to Serie A for the third time in our history. We go up to the top flight and we're in the first division fighting it out with the big boys yet again. Serie A, here we come. Watch out because this time Frosinone are here to stay under Sir BCHD's reign. Our main performers were the likes of Camilo Ciano with 28 goals and 18 assists. Federico Dionisi in there with 16 goals and two, Alessandro Salvi from left back and right back. 10 goals and 4 assists for him in our main marquee signing. Carles Perez, the Spaniard, 10 goals and 4 assists. 10 goal contributions from Marcelo Trotta doing his fair share as we head into our first Serie A season. The aim is survival. Some major improvements are coming to this Frosinone squad and I cannot wait to get our campaign underway. And after the pre-season tournament, we are left with just about £12 million to spend on recruits to help us survive in Serie A. The main goal this season is salvation. So we got to aim for it. We're going to bring in the right players. We're working on a tight budget. So let's hope we can pull off some major deals. And we're going to start the season off, not with a signing, but recalling back one of our lone stars, Joel Campbell. The Costa Rican is out in Mexico at Leon. And if you remember him from the 2014 World Cup or you're an Arsenal fan, you will have fond memories of him. And we've bagged the Costa Rican back in the squad. He's going to be a valuable member in our top flight campaign. And we've officially got the ball rolling in season two with our first piece of summer transfer business. It is Ante Palaversa for £6 million. Pounds. Arriving from Manchester City for a flat fee, he will be a midfield powerhouse and the Croatian joins, showing great potential and it already looks like he slots straight in with that yellow shirt in the profile picture. He is going to be a marquee addition to the squad and he will slot straight into that starting 11. And our defensive department receives an upgrade once more with Ayat Nuri arriving from the French League. I believe he comes from Angers and he's showing great potential. The Frenchman is 72 
two overall and that left back position is just going to become that much better as a 19 year old we picked him up for under his valuation 4.5 million pounds so two signings at the start of season two to our brand new number five welcome to Frosinone and unfortunately that was all the business we could pull off in the window deadline day has come to a halt and with one hour remaining it is only two signings of Palaversa and Ait Nuri for 10.5 million hopefully that's enough to keep us in the top flight for another year going straight back down to Serie B is definitely the last thing on our minds right now let's hope the boys can rally together and Sir BCHD can help Frosinone survive there's a first time for everything and for the first time in club history Frosinone stay up in the top fly we survive in Serie A for one more season collecting 32 points and the Canaries are flying higher we finished above the likes of Benevento, Empoli, Spal and even Atalanta in there and at the top of the table it is Napoli taking home the crown unfortunately in the Coppa Italia we couldn't make it past round two getting defeated 3-2 to Pescara well we achieved our main goal of survival and that is all that matters season three brings Bring it on because we have got some big stuff in store. And to kick off season three with a bang, we've opened up with a massive summer purchase here. We've upgraded our goalkeeper position. We've bolstered our number one spot and we've brought in Andre Lunen from Real Madrid for 26.8 million pounds. The Ukrainian joins us over here in the Serie A. So welcome to the club, Andre Lunen. As we look to strengthen our squad depth this season, we've gone after a little bit of a strategic purchase here as we brought in Samuele Birin. Delhi. The 21 year old Italian right back arrives from Darmstadt over in the German league but he's originally from Pisa for 4.7 million pounds. He's versatile, he's a bit of a utility man. He can play a right back, centre back and right mid so he'll help us out in multiple positions, multiple departments, a handy little player to have in the squad to say the least. And our spending spree continues here after we seal a 15.6 million pound deal with Nice for Alexis Claude Maurice. We're bolstering our attack here with the 23 year old left midfielder. He can also play at Cam and the Frenchman is going to be the brand new number 24 here at Frosinone. And after all those signings our transfer budget has been depleted and now we have some play departures to report on. We have Alessio Tribuzzi off the sea on for 640k. Luca Matarese is also off in the same direction. Sion pick up a little double Frosinone player swoop there for 770k and then the 33 year old Alessandro Salvi. A bit of dead wood heading out the club. Tondela purchasing him for 500k and that is going to conclude all of our summer transfer business for the start of season three i think that is enough to score us a mid-table position eguelfi is also departing the club due to the fact he was in a little swap deal with birindelli nonetheless 47 million pounds spent on this frosinone squad can they do it two years in a row stay up and maybe even push up the table we're gonna have to find out that is how so bchd's frosinone will be lining up in season three and we've only gone and done it again, securing our Serie A status two years in a row. And this time we've avoided the relegation zone by quite a long distance here, 46 points. We even finished above local rivals Lazio. I can't imagine a world where that would ever happen considering they're gunning for the Scudetto this year. Juventus finishing out on top and we come in 13th. It is Brescia, Parma and Pescara all going back down to Serie B. We'll take a look at our Coppa Italia run. Did we make it far? We're gonna have to wait and see. Milan knocked us out in the round of 16. 4 nil. In what would be a mediocre season for many, it is improvement nonetheless in context of our situation and Pietro Pellegri, the Italian striker in there, our top goal scorer, 11 goals. Joe Campbell repaying the club there with 10 goals and then Carles Perez, our marquee signing back in Serie B with 10 goal contributions. Alan Velasco also getting involved. The teenage Argentinian is enjoying his time here in Italy. And also in his debut stint, Alexis Claude Maurice, the French versatile midfielder, bagging nine goal contributions, six assists for the left mid. Season three is definitely a success in my book, securing our spot in Serie A and cementing our first division stature. We're going into season four, looking to push even higher up the table, aiming for the club's first ever European qualification sooner rather than later. And we're off to the right foot here in season four as we begin triggering a release clause for Julian Alvarez. The Argentinian striker arrives for just over four million pounds and the 22 year old is worth 15 15.5 mil and we really got a bargain of a deal there. River Plate have been ripped off. We take advantage and it is a major upgrade in that striker position. To be the partner up top with Pietro Pellegri, hopefully Julian Alvarez can find the back of the net for Frosinone. Another department which 
we needed to upgrade desperately was the center back position and we've only gone after the Belgian center back Zeno van Heusden. Standard Liège showed us a dream however he is out with an ACL injury for four months so he won't be able to make his debut for the club for a while. The former Inter Milan player arrives for 25.5 million pounds. We've broken a club record there so hopefully Zeno can fix most of our defensive issues this season. And today is a sad day for Frosinone fans as Camilo Ciano departs the club for 3.5 million pounds. He is off to play his football in Portugal for Moriense. The 32 year old Italian has been a hero for us in recent years and he's probably been one of our best signings in a while but he's now 32 in this save. We've had to offload him so farewell Camilo Ciano. And our striker purge continues here with Marcelo Trotta moving over to the Premier League. It will be the Blade Sheffield United to pick up the Italian hitman. He's now 29 years of age. We've been overloaded with strikers. Trotta's surplus to requirements and yeah he's going to be applying his services over in England. And it's not one but two release clauses we have activated here in this summer transfer window season four. We've brought in Alfonso Davies for 17.1 million pounds. The 21 year old Canadian he's an exciting prospect and he is going to be an absolutely gargantuan upgrade at that left mid spot. Arriving from Bayern Munich he's joining one of the most exciting squads in Europe right now so welcome over to Frosinone Alfonso Davies. Due to our backup goalkeeper Francesco Bardi's rapid decline we've had to go ahead and invest in a backup goalkeeper for Andre Lunen in net. It will be the Venezuelan Walker Farines. He joins over from Milonarios and you've guessed it it is another release clause activation for 12.8 million pounds. We have literally used up all our transfer budget. He's a man I've had on my radar for quite some time now so I'm glad we could finally go ahead and take some action. Farines welcome on over to Serie A. And to end off deadline day it is four players in two players out in this summer transfer window an effective and efficient window in my eyes. We got the transfers we wanted done. We have improved the squad beyond belief and now it's time to crack on into season four. And as season four is all wrapped up it is Frosinone up in seventh position in Serie A. They are swinging up top with the big boys. We are competing and we were only just a few points away from European competition. It's going to be tough to go toe to toe with the likes of Juventus. Not even losing a game this entire season 108 points they take out the Scudetto. It was a 1-0 defeat to Roma in the round of 16. We were eliminated in the Coppa Italia. You guessed it Juventus took out that trophy. And our top goal scorer in season 3. You guessed it he's back again. Pietro Pellegri with 22 goals and 4 assists. Julian Alvarez in his brand new season. In his first season in Frosinone Colors. 26 goal contributions. 14 goals and 12 assists. It can do it all. The Italian and the Argentine seems to be forming up a partnership of dreams as Alexis Claude Maurice bagged six goals and eight assists. And Andre Lunen, the highest rated player in this team, 10 clean sheets in 44 appearances. The Ukrainian is really doing us proud. As we enter season five, things have never looked better. The spirits are at an all time high, and Frosinone are looking bound to qualify for Europe next season. So, Let's see what deals we can pull off in the transfer window to revolutionize the squad. And it was just simply an offer we could not refuse. Season 5 and we're back at an old tricks again. We reactivated another release clause in this team. 10.2 million pounds for the Romanian Ianis Hagi. Arriving over from Ghent and he's valued at triple that. 30.5 million pounds. He has that something special he can play on either wings. He can play down the middle. He's a versatile attacking midfielder. And I cannot wait to see how the Romanian wonder kid performs here at Frosinone. So welcome to Italy, Ianis Hagi. And we're spending big yet again on the defense. This time the left back position gets a major upgrade in the form of the Englishman Ryan Sessegnon arriving from Spurs for 20 million pounds. The 23 year old can play a left back, left wing and left mid. Arriving over from Spurs, I think this is going to be another exquisite piece of recruitment. Our defense this year is looking pretty much unbreakable after the arrival of Ozan Back, the Turkish unit. The center back arrives from Schalke in the Bundesliga for 32.6 million pounds. No bargain for this one. We've shelled out a massive sum of cash. And the transfer is signed 
and sealed and delivered the perfect center back partnership for Van Houston at the back. Just an enormous physical presence is going to slot straight into our starting 11. So welcome on over to Frosinone, Ozan Kabak. And as the summer arrivals continue to roll in, we needed to balance the books. And now we have a player departure to report on. It is Marcus Rodan, the Swedish midfielder. He is now transferred over to Reading in England and our 32-year-old for £1.5 million. Pounds. He will be missed. He's one of our best players in real life, to be fair. However, now, just years into the future, he's not up to the level. Farewell, Roden. You've been a valiant servant here at the club. And as we continue to sell more Deadwood, we have Luka Kranjic transferring over to Malaga in Spain for just over £2 million. Pounds. The Slovenian centre-back, just like Roden, has fallen out of favour at the club. He's not up to par, and it was just the right time to let him go. So, Luka Kranjic, farewell. Following three signings in a row is going to have to be three departures here. We have another sale to report on. It will be Andrea Begetto for probably one of our most expensive fees yet. 6.4 million pounds and he will be joining Porto. A similar story to the other players leaving Frosinone. He's just not good enough for the club anymore and Begetto will be off to Portugal. After a lengthy negotiation process, we managed to pull this one off by the skin of our teeth. It is Sebastiano Esposito arriving here at Frosinone on a little bit of a swap deal. You all know on the channel, if you've watched for a while, we love a swap deal and Andrea Novakovic will be headed the other way to Lens in the French League. We will receive the exciting prospect Esposito who's been absolutely lighting up Italian football. Now at 21 years of age, 77 overall, he's going to be a brilliant impact sub off the bench. And don't mind me, we somehow managed to qualify for the Europa League through the qualification round. Somehow finishing in 7th was enough in order to enter the playoffs and now we are faced in Group B, drawn in with Sevilla, Gens and Ray. Rangers. Well, this has definitely caught me off guard and I did not expect this. So, Frosinone are in Europe for the first time in club history and Sir BCHD is just out here breaking records. That spiced things up now with the Europa League being involved in Season 5. I cannot wait to get underway. It was a total of £77.9 million pounds to spend in our European debut. The real question is, can we really compete on multiple fronts? It's the first time we've had to deal with European competition, so hopefully that trend transfer business can get us over the line in this season. This is how our main starting 11 will be looking. The Giallo Azzurri are looking as strong as ever. And I hope the lads out there are ready and roaring to go. First time's a charm for us in the Europa League, finishing on top of our group with 18 points. Absolute demolition there as we qualify for the round of 32. We are up against Turkish outfit Besiktas, and this is probably one of our main routes to Champions League qualification. If we win the Europa League, I don't want to rely on it, but it could be a back up source. Unfortunately, it was a European Cup run short-lived as we got eliminated in the round of 16, 4 to an aggregate to Nice, Claude Maurice's former side, but we did manage to get past Besiktas, 5-1 an aggregate. And this is how our Serie A campaign ended, 5 seasons in and we finish in 5th with 86 points, only 2 points away from Champions League qualification. AC Milan take out the Scudetto, meanwhile Juventus, Roma and Inter were right behind them. And on the opposite end of the table, it was Benevento, Parma and Livorno all going back down to Serie B. And it was our deepest Coppa Italia run yet eliminated in the quarterfinals to the eventual Scudetto winners 1-0 to Milan. And it looks like Julian Alvarez, the Argentinian hitman, is really stamping his authority on this Frosinone side, finishing off our top goal scorer with 25 goals. The Frenchman Claude Maurice being our main playmaker, 17 goals and 18 assists for him. Pietro Pellegri didn't have the season. He has really set himself some high standards. He hasn't hit them this season though. He Giannis Hagi came in and scored 14 goals and bagged 12 assists. Carles Perez also had a season to remember in there with 13 goals and 5. Sebastiano Esposito also off the bench with 7 goals, which is highly respectable. And then the main man in between the sticks, Andre Lunen with 25 clean sheets. And another season goes by with the Champions League gone begging. We're really gunning for that top 4 spot in Season 6, so make sure you watch out. The rest of Serie A, Frosinone are coming for you. And it wouldn't be an Italian rebuild without the purchase of one man and one man only it is Sandro Tonali the absolute Don the G the next Andrea Pirro we have purchased him for 62.6 million pounds over from Watford and let me tell you he is not the next Pirro he is the first Tonali to enter the scene and he is captivating Italian football right now we need a CDM in this team that's going to control the tempo get in on defensive action and he is just the man for the job and the 24 year old will be our most expensive signing yet and as we welcomed Tonali to Frosinone, there was no other transfer
transfer business to be done this window. That was the one and only transfer we could afford. Let's cross our fingers and hope it works out. And this is the starting 11 going out into battle for us this season. The Champions League is a must. Qualification is desperately needed. I believe we've done enough. So let's go out and do the job. Would you take a look at that? That has got to go down in Serie A history, in European history, a three-way title race. And they've, we finished on the exact same points as both Inter and Roma. 97 for three teams. And it still goes down to Roma lifting up the Scudetto at the end of the day. We were so close. We were fractions away from winning the title. But we do qualify for the Champions League. And that is all we aimed for. That is absolutely mental. And then we have Sassuolo, Sampdoria and Spal all going back down to the second division. And in the Coppa Italia, we reached the semi-finals. It was a 2-1 aggregate loss to Milan at home. It went down to the wire and they ended up losing on penalties to Juventus. In the Europa League Group F, we absolutely toppled with 16 points. We made it out of there. We also took out Anderlecht with us in the round of 32, 4 0 win on aggregate against Sevilla. We also won 3 0 on aggregate, 3 0 away from home. And then we ended up losing out to Napoli, 3 2 in aggregate in the quarterfinals. That is the furthest we've ever gone in the Europa League. I'm proud of the lads, but next season we're into bigger and better things. The Champions League has come calling. In what has been a season of epic proportions, a record breaking year. It is Julian Alvarez again. He just knows how to find the back of the net. He's our top goal scorer with 29 goals and 7 assists. Carles Perez, he's been with us since the beginning, and the Spaniard continues to be a consistent performer. Lord Maurice, our French playmaker, continues to be a consistent, prominent figure in this team. And we also have Giannis Hagi, the Romanian, netting 16 goals and 17 assists. Pietro Pellegri continues to be outshunned by his strike partner, Alvarez. Never Nevertheless, he did manage to get 16 goal contributions. And the big boy now, El Capitano Sandro Tonali, the metronome in midfield. He just knows how to play in this division. And he scored three goals and five assists from CDM. And you've always got to give it to him. Andre Lunin, he's ever so classy. 30 clean sheets and even one assist for the Ukrainian this time out. As Frosinone's meteoric rise to the top of world football continues. Hopefully, season seven will be lucky season number seven. And we can go out and win some silverware. As we win pursuit for more defensive talent, some more recruitments for our back line. It will be Eda Militao, the Brazilian signing on for £56 million at the start of Season 7. The 27-year-old arrives from the capital and we've poached him off the Scudetto winners last year, Roma. He's now automatically our highest rated centre-back and he will be linking up with the likes of Kabak at the back. The big old offensive general, Eda Militao, welcome on over to the Giallo Azzurri. And it has been a common theme throughout the pretty much this entire rebuild. Every single season, we've sought after a release clause, and this year is no different. We picked up the Portuguese midfielder Miguel Luiz for 14.4 million pounds. When you take a look at his valuation and the transfer fee we paid, you know we could not refuse this offer. It was too good to let go, and now the brand new Portuguese star will be a little backup option. It's gonna provide us for some more quality, and of course, giving us that little bit of depth in the middle of the park, so welcome on over to Italy. You guys know it wouldn't be a bit CHD video without a cheeky little swap deal involved and we've done exactly that in season 7. We've finally transferred over Nicolo Zaniolo. We've had the Italian on our radar for so long now. He arrives over from Arsenal so welcome back home Zaniolo. And as you guys might have seen 6 million pounds plus Carles Perez. I know it's a bit of a controversial one. He's been with us ever since season 1 but I just had to let the Spaniard go. We've got way too many right mids in this team and Zaniolo can also play in that position. Nicolo Zaniolo, I just have a gut feeling that he's going to be an outstanding purchase. I actually did end up forgetting to show this last season. In January, we actually went and picked up Takafuzu Kubo on a pre-contract. We got the Japanese wonder kid on a free, and it was just yet another reason to let go of Carles Perez. The Spaniard was surplus to requirements, and Takafuzu Kubo was just too good of an offer to let up from Real Madrid, and the Japanese superstar will be the first ever in his nation to play for Frosinone. After all that business, this is how our youth UCL group is looking the first one ever in group B we have alongside us Spurs, PSV and Basel so I guess we got a bit of luck of the draw. We do have Spurs
colors, which could be a bit of a threat, but I'm expecting to finish top of that group in flying colors. Spending a total of three quarters of 100 million pounds, it was Militao, Luis, and Zaniolo all welcoming on into the club. And then our first departure in quite a while, Perez, that is how our summer shaped up. And after seven seasons of signings, this is how Frosinone is looking going into our first ever Champions League season. And we're also gunning for the league. We have really stepped it up a level. Literally every single player in the starting 11 is world class. Ballers are in high supply. So hopefully they can go ahead and get the job done. And it seems like my predictions came through here. We have wiped the floor clean with Group B finishing on top with 16 points. Spurs qualify right beneath us. And then we are matched up against RB Leipzig in the round of 16. We are destroying the league left, right and center. We have won every single game up to this point. 51 points at the halfway stage. Surely we've got the Scudetto on lock. The rest of the league cannot even handle us right now. Book your flights, book your accommodation because we have a Coppa Italia final in the capital awaiting us. For the first time in club history, we have made it all the way to the big dance in the Coppa Italia, our first chance for silverware. And let me tell you, it is going to be one hell of a battle. It is David versus Goliath. Our road to the final saw us beat Benevento 4-0 in the quarters. We beat out Juventus 3-2. And in the semis up against Milan, it was a 4-2 elimination of the Rossoneri that sees us go head to head with our crosstown rivals. And here are our soldiers going out to battle tonight at the Stadio Olimpico. It is Roma's home turf. So could we cause an upset? Can we take the trophy away from the capital? And it's a 2-1 win. It is Alfonso Davies from left back and Claude Maurice, our trusty playmaker. The Frenchman gets us the goal and we went up 2-0 early. Abraham got one back for Roma. It wasn't enough and we win our first piece of silverware in this entire rebuild, the Coppa Italia. Drink it in, soak it in, let it in boys, Frosinone are here and we are not going anywhere anytime soon. It took seven years of hustling but we have absolutely trounced Serie A, we are crowned champions and we take home the Scudetto for the first time in history. I probably will never be able to experience this in real life but it's good to live it out in FIFA and Frosinone are finally Italian champions, we've taken home the Italian domestic double, Juventus are finally dethroned and it will be ample. Hellas Verona and Livorno all going back down to Serie B. While we're basking in our glory, I mean, it was the Coppa Italia that we took home. We all saw it. We all knew it happened. And now we have a Champions League final. PSG are the opponents. Two heavyweights going at it. Just a little recap of our journey. We took out RB Leipzig 3-1 in the round of 16. The Germans fell through. And then against Olympic Lyon, we did win 3-0 in aggregate. Very comfortable. And then we edged it past Atletico Madrid 3-3 on away goals. We took out the Spanish Giants. It's us against one of the richest clubs in the world. What a story this would be. This is our chance. This is our shot at the treble. We hadn't won one piece of silverware before this season and now all of a sudden we could be the first Italian team to win the treble since Inter Milan in 2010. 16 years later and the Chochari are breaking records under Sir BCHD's guidance and it's thanks to this man partly, Julian Alvarez, the Argentinian hitman who's been our top goal scorer throughout this entire Entire rebuild. 39 goals for him this season, 15 assists. Claude Marie sat it again with another picture perfect, consistent season for the Frenchman. 29 goals, 13 assists. Ianis Hagi in there with 21 goals, 20 assists, 41 goal contributions. Ryan Tessignon proved to be a pivotal pickup in there, a left back, 13 goals and 9. And then Pietro Pellegri once more being outshunned by his strike partner. One last look at this Frosinone side we've built before we go into battle in the final and we've kept two Frosinone OGs in Marco Capuano and Francesco Bardi. That was just one thing I wanted to do throughout this rebuild. I wanted to keep at least one or two of the original players just so that it was, you know, we could let them have some Champions League glory if you know what I mean. But it has been a wild journey. We've picked up some of the best young talent in the game and they've all grown with each other. They've grown to absolutely outstanding heights and it's Pierre Pietro Pellegri, our highest rated player in there at 91. Sandro Tonali will be the capitano tonight to lead the Italian champions to glory as we aim for continental success.
We started from the ground up. We all know PSG are the mega rich cash giants of the football world. So let's see if we could cause an upset here against the Parisians. Going to kick off from the word go. It is action from the first minute here at the Wanda Metropolitano. Oh, Lunin, why has he punched that? Lunin, what are you doing, Lunin? And that was a chance for Marcus Rashford, the captain. Straight back to Tonali. Hagi again involved, as always. And now Claude Maurice goes for the strike. Onana was comfortable. Let's see what we can do. Claude Maurice, can he get another assist to his name outside the box? That is Pellegri. No, it was Zaniolo who crept around. He did a little sneaky in the number 23. Nearly opened up the scoring. And as we move forward, it is Locatelli, another... Italian star up against us tonight. Locatelli might go for it. That was a brilliant one-two play, but it's Hagi back on defense. Why has he done that? Lunin came out well to block the strike. That was a hard-in-mouth moment. Rimpong tracking down Pellegrini. And now back inside, El Militao gets away. Hagi again on defensive duties. And Pietro Pellegri tries to win the header. The target man is absolutely giving it away. And now Kylian Mbappe threw on goal. Luna, new hero. The Ukrainian shot stopper denies Kylian Mbappe of the opener. Can we get a counter-attack going before half time? A goal would be perfect. And it's Hagi making his run. Tonali, surely the Romanian onside. And now it's going to be a little chip over the top. Onada didn't even bother. And against the run of play, it is Ianis Hagi to get the opener in the Champions League final. You can't can't write scripts like these. The fans right in front of the action as well. They are absolutely ecstatic. It was a classic FIFA 14-esque over-the-top through ball. It was the deftest of chips, the audacity from the Romanian. And our number 19 with the cheekiest way possible. Onana just, all he could do was watch it fly over his head. And that is 1-0 to Frosinone. PSG are absolutely stumped. Showing his physicality out there tonight. Alvarez, who's been a club top goal scorer, the Argentine on the right hand side. Imagine a second before half time. That would be unheard of. It's a 50k sub special. Let's go straight into this second half. It will be Alvarez to get us underway. Calmness to his nature. And look at him still powering forward. It will be Alvarez making the run, but. Pellegri might have a go, you know, Pellegri, and that was a delayed reaction by Onana in net, and the Italian was so close to doubling our advantage, and now it is back over to the Spaniard, it is Marcus Rashford through on goal, Lunin has a big opportunity here, Lunin, that was the save of the century by the Ukrainian, he is having the game of his life, and the Argentine cuts back inside, fools Christensen, the ball in the middle, that was dangerous, and now Claude Maurice had the chance, and he got... A little bit excited in that situation. The Frenchman couldn't control it. I'm mounting their counter-attacks, but Tonali just breaking up every single one of their attacks. And now Alvarez could launch a through ball into the path of Pellegrini. The target man isn't one to run, but it will cut back inside. He might have a chance, you know. Pietro Pellegrini. Hagi, he might set one up, you know. Back over to Tonali, the captain. The back pushing forward, the Turkish unit. Alvarez puts it through. It might be Giannis Hagi for the double. Onana spills, and it will be a corner. Right, our substitutes coming on. Takafuzu Kubo for Zaniolo, and it will be Esposito on for Pellegri. It is very attacking changes. Tonali, brilliant interception, but he's lost out possession to Marcus Rashford, and the captain striding forward with pace and purpose. Now over to Abel Ruiz, and Marcus Rashford gets PSG their equaliser 87 minutes in three minutes to go and the Englishman powers that home and PSG have finally gotten the goal they were after a little connection a little interplay with Abel Ruiz and Andre Lunen who's been absolutely dynamite tonight has been finally beaten and that was just unstoppable so PSG was minutes away from European glory that will be it it was that Rashford goal that is going to send us into an extra half an hour of football it will be extra time and maybe even penalties to sort us out again we can't clear it away it's back over to the corner this might be the finishing blow and indeedy with the shot just wide. Back over, Espositor couldn't find Alvarez on the overlapping run. Espositor's made his way inside, but the Argentine finds some space, and the Argentine fires a goal. It is Onana with a fingertip save, and it will go to penalties. Okay, the referees caught it early. I don't know why the PSG fans are celebrating, but they were on the ropes. To see who wins the Champions League, it is down to spot kicks, boys. I hope we practice in training, because this is going to be one hell of a task. First up is Milik. He is going that way. Lunen gets in. He saved it. Now it's Bozitor, the first one for us. And I'm going to go try go top right. This penalty system is always... Okay, again... We've lost it out. Killing Mbappe. He's going left. There we go. Killing Mbappe. Getting the bin, son. Alvarez, who it really hasn't been his night tonight. And thankfully, he converts the penalty. Our number 10 hasn't really shown his quality. 
It is Ikorne. Oh, Ikorne does the chip as well, the Panenka. Okay, it's 1-1. Argy, the goal scorer. Can the Romanian follow through in the penalty shootout? Why have we done that, man? Oh, I've lost control. Now it is Abba Ruiz to put PSG into the lead. Oh, he hits the post as well. Gets in the bin, son. Tenali, we're going to go bottom corner like we know best. Tenali. Oh, Nana with the save. This is terrible. This is terrible. Indeed, he hits the post and it goes in. PSG take the lead. And it will be Claude Maurice. Please. Please, Claude Maurice. Please, there we go. There we go. PSG with Wan Bissaka. Wan Bissaka. And he's hit the crossbar to win it. It is Alfonso Davies, the Canadian of all people. And it is our left back. Oh, this is going to be one hell of a kick. Come on, Alfonso. Do us proud. Win Frosinone, their first ever Champions League. And oh, of course, of course. Now Pellegrini, the left back. And there we go, Lunin. Oh, he saved it. I thought he put it into the back of the net. But now it is Takafuza Kubo. Please, the Japanese wonder kid. Can he do it on the biggest of stages? And it's hit the post and gone in. Takafuza Kubo, you absolute legend. He's written his name in Frosinone folklore. And he's won us our first ever Champions League. We are champions of Europe, champions of the world. And the Giallo Azzurri have completed world domination. It took spot kicks, penalty shootouts right in front of our traveling fans and it was a bit of a my heart literally skipped a beat when it hit the post i thought he fluffed it but no we end up taking it out and it was in the most dramatic of circumstances the 50k subscribers special has been an absolute roller coaster it has been a blast we win three two on penalties in the most bizarre way possible rosin on air take out the title and that is the rebuild complete we win the Champions League. What a journey it has been from the bottom of my heart, guys. Thank you so much for helping me achieve this milestone. 50,000 subscribers is absolutely out of this world, and I couldn't be here without you guys and all your support you've been showing over the years. So if you did go ahead and enjoy this 50K subscribers special, make sure to smack that like button down below. Hit subscribe, turn on those notifications for way more Favor 20 content coming in the future. Don't worry, we aren't stopping here at 50K. It is now the road to 100K. We are on, and follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Comment down below any future ideas. Finally, it is to um, we lift up the trophy. I never thought I'd see it, to be honest. We'd probably only be able to see it in FIFA 20 career mode. We've only gone and done it, and it is El Capitano Sandro Tonali to deliver us glory. What a grind, what a journey it has been, and we are finally rewarded with the Holy Grail. As always, I've been BCHD. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. Have a lovely day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Forza Frosinone! Yeah!